In case you haven't heard, macOS Sequoia has a really cool feature that works with iOS 18 and your iPhone to basically give you your iPhone on your Mac. It's called iPhone Mirroring. It's available in the public beta for both your iPhone and your Mac. And I'm gonna show you how it works because it's incredibly good. Like it works really, really well. Uh, I kind of don't have words for how well it works. I'm very, very shocked. Uh, but I wanna showcase some of the things that it can do and why you might want to use this. So I've already used it. So you'll basically see once you upgrade the Mac uh, to Mac OS Sequoia down here at the bottom, you'll have iPhone mirroring. You just tap on the app here and it'll say connecting to your iPhone 15 Pro Max and boom, it's already up and running and I can use my trackpad to swipe back and forth very little to absolutely no lag in most circumstances which is incredibly impressive uh, but yeah you can navigate throughout your phone open up applications if you want to you can even type different things here like look I'm the keyboard doesn't even show up because it knows that you have your Mac keyboard and I can type like I normally would with pretty much zero lag I'm like incredibly impressed with how well this works. Now, navigating back to your home screen, you can do that in a couple of different ways. So that bar at the bottom is one way that you would go home, you'd swipe up, and you can pretty much do that by just clicking on it. Or uh, if we open it back up, if you go up to the top right corner, you'll see two different icons. This grid icon here is one way to go home. And this little uh, phone icon here that has multiple apps is your app switcher. So here, is your app switcher you can swipe through all of the apps that you have open and of course if you want to use your keyboard you can just do that instead so home screen is command one i believe app switcher is command two and app three is spotlight search and so really seamless really easy to use and i'm still just blown away at how well this works uh, another big reason why you'd want to use this is when you have apps on your phone that don't exist on your Mac and you don't wanna keep pulling out your phone uh, because you have so many notifications happening, maybe like for me, I use the Eufy security app for my Eufy cameras outside of my house. And I've got a couple of alerts here. If I go over to the control center, you'll see, or the notification center, you'll see all of the notifications with the little iPhone icon next to them. Obviously that signifies that these are notifications coming from my phone. And so I have one here that says backyard security. Someone has been spotted. So I can go ahead and tap on it and boom, there is my notification quickly opened up on my iPhone mirroring app here and I can see my family's running around in the backyard. This is fantastic. This is a game changer for me who gets a lot of these notifications and kind of want to make sure that, you know, everything's all right at home. Maybe there's a package that needs to be left and I can just easily interact with the person at the door. Uh, it's a game changer. I don't have to use my phone anymore. I could put my phone in my bag and leave it there and use my phone from the comfort of my desk on my Mac. And that is already in itself worth it to me. Here's a perfect example of a real life use case for this. Uh, my heating and air conditioning ducts in the studio are very loud and it will pick up on the microphone. I do my best to suppress it, but you can still kind of tell, especially if you're wearing headphones. I usually want to turn off the AC while I'm shooting. Uh, and so look, it came on during the middle of this and I can go into the uh, Ecobee app and I can go ahead and turn off my HVAC unit right here. I don't even have to move or take out my phone. Uh, that's perfect real life example of how this is useful to me. Now, if you're wondering what your iPhone looks like during this entire process, uh, really it's just a notification that says your phone is being used uh, by your laptop. And that's pretty much it. If you don't have always on display, you won't even notice that it's on. Uh, so you can leave this in your bag, you can leave it on your desk, you can leave it somewhere else in your house as long as it's got a strong connection to your Mac and you'll be able to control your iPhone from anywhere, and that is fantastic to me. So there's actually this entire section about notifications and how at first I really wasn't getting them uh, coming in as an alert. Uh, I wanted to quickly update you, and somehow between yesterday and today, that actually has started to work really well, um, and it does come in as an alert. Uh, both while the iPhone mirroring app is obviously open and connected to your iPhone, or when it's disconnected and you're using your phone, you still get iPhone notifications coming in as alerts, as well as being in your notification center. So I just wanted to give you a quick update on that. Another fantastic use case for this is the ability to drag and drop media or files from your phone to your Mac or from your Mac to your phone. And you can do that all in iPhone mirroring. And that is Something that's unfortunately also not working right now, and I think that's just something that's not enabled or, again, 
could be a bug, but when that does work, it'll be amazing. Especially if you're a content creator like I am, or maybe you're just a everyday person who likes to post on Instagram, but you're working on a photo on your app, um, on your Mac, and you want to be able to just easily, you know, put that on Instagram without having to use the uh, website. You can use the iPhone app instead, where you have more tools available for you. And all you got to do is just drag that photo from your Mac to the Instagram app and automatically upload it. For me, I can export a short from Final Cut Pro, immediately take that file, upload it to Instagram using iPhone mirroring, use the editor. You can do all of the things that you might not be able to do using the desktop website or like a third party, you know, social media management software. Uh, sometimes you don't get all of that editing uh, tools at your disposal. And you can use the Instagram app on your iPhone using iPhone mirroring to do all of that. So yeah, that's iPhone mirroring in a nutshell. I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. Maybe there's a use case that we haven't thought of or talked about uh, that you would be using this for and you would find it incredibly useful. Let me know down in those comments. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.